good afternoon, everybody. Lucas here, representing Telestream and ScreenFlow for another ScreenFlow Live. It's been a while. I was uh, at a trade show down in Florida, FETC, talking to educators about ScreenFlow and another one of our products, Wirecast. So I wasn't here the last time we should have had a show. And with this, you know, every other week schedule, sometimes I've got other things to take care of, so I wasn't able to be here. But I'm here now. I'm going to be here in two weeks as well. And today's topic is all about good habits that you can develop, habits that I use. I don't know if you say use habits, but habits that I have when I'm using ScreenFlow. So stick around. Today's all about good habits when using ScreenFlow. And uh, before we really get into the, the meat of it, I just want to let you know that you can watch us on all the social platforms. I think we, we're up on all of them today. We, we might not be on all of them, but you can always follow us there. Uh, slash ScreenFlow, Facebook.com slash ScreenFlow for our Facebook page. On Twitter, we're at ScreenFlow. And if you just search ScreenFlow Tube in YouTube, you should find our ScreenFlow YouTube page. And that's where we host all of these videos if you don't. Uh, make it to the show the day of. You can always come in a little bit later and watch the video again. You can also sign up for email updates for when we go live. Uh, it should be up there on your screen. It will say www.telestream.net slash ScreenFlow Live. There's a little form there you can fill out, and uh, we will send you an email when the show is live, when we're ready to go. So before we start today, I just want to remind people, please, I really, at the end of the day, I'm here for you guys. And we have topics that we cover, but what is most helpful for me is when I get some questions from you guys in the chat so that I can answer those. Because I have a very large, I don't know everything about ScreenFlow, but I know quite a bit. I use it all the time. So anytime you guys want extra special questions to be answered. I'm here to answer your individual questions. Um, and I've got uh, I've got my eye on the Facebook chat right now. So if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in there. And I have a list of uh, habits that I, I employ when I'm using ScreenFlow. And this isn't an exhaustive list. And always remember, I mean, this is all this is based on my personal experience using ScreenFlow. This is not fact. But I've found these tactics to be really helpful when I'm doing uh, anything in ScreenFlow from the recording all the way to the publishing side of things. So we're going to go through them today. I don't have a million to talk about. It might be a short show today, but I just wanted to put these out there and let you guys know that these things could help you if they're not already doing them. So let's start from before we even you know, have the content there when it comes to setting up your recording. Um, if we could switch over to my desktop here, I just want to show you guys I have, you know, some content on my desktop over here on the right hand side. I got all these, you know, some installers and some screenshots. Here's a screenshot that I took of a big screen flow project, you know, before you even start the very first thing you should always do if you're screen recording, come up to the ScreenFlow helper icon and hide desktop icons. I don't know if you guys do that. I've shown this to people who've been using ScreenFlow for a long time and they're like, oh my God, I had no idea you could do that. It just hides everything on your desktop. If you have a, a different picture in the back of a desktop, it'll keep that there. And if you have a, you know, a different place to go, you'd have to come and um, hide the desktop icons again. Uh, for that specific desktop. But that's something you should do all the time. Nobody wants to come and watch one of your screen flow recordings and have just like your super cluttered desktop. And I got to say, I mean, mine's looking real good right now. Uh, I do this thing where every couple of months I see this is January 18th. On January 18th, I put everything that was in on my on my desktop into one single folder. But now I can just hide those desktop icons and you're ready to go. And that's actually something that is really helpful when you're not even using ScreenFlow. Um, even just giving a presentation here at work, if I'm using my computer, I always hide my desktop icon so it doesn't look so cluttered all the time. So I highly recommend doing that. Now, before we click the recording button, here's another thing I would recommend. I have seen 
people on social media come in and be like, oh my gosh, I just spent an hour and a half recording and I didn't record my audio. Or I forgot to record this one thing or I didn't have the right thing set here. One thing that I recommend and one thing that I do every time is I record every single piece of media that I possibly can record with ScreenFlow every single time I do a recording. So what that means is that if I'm doing just a voiceover, it doesn't matter. I'm going to have ScreenFlow record my desktop. I'm going to have it record my camera. I'm going to have it record my audio from my computer. I'm going to have it record everything every single time because it's not worth the wasted time to realize that after 20 minutes of recording, you forgot to record one specific part of your presentation or whatever it is that you're recording. And the amount of time that it takes to delete media files and screen flow is just non-existent. It takes no time at all. So I highly recommend toggling on everything. I don't have an iOS device um, connected right now, but if I did, I'd have that toggled on too. And the nice thing about it is that if you if you start a recording and you have everything toggled on like this, and now I'm going to record everything just for a second, do some waves with my hands and maybe open up Google real fast to see what's going on and then come back and stop that recording. I can come in here and I can delete any piece of this that I want. If I really, at the end of the day, all I wanted was that screen recording, I can just come in here and delete my camera and my audio. And I can come in here and I can... Extra, uh, detach the audio from this and delete that screen recording audio. Now all I'm left with is that screen recording. And that's really helpful because like I said, it's not worth it to lose all of your content because you forgot to click one button. I've seen people do it all the time. Now another thing that, that people tend to talk about is we've actually had a lot of people saying, why is it then when, for example, if I if I start a new recording here, why is it that when I come and I stop my recording, it, it, it doesn't just, you know, allow me to get rid of it immediately if I don't want it? Why can't I just say stop recording and discard? Well, we want to give you the option to save it or add it to another discard. You can discard from here. But what I realized when people were asking that question is that they were doing these, these screen recordings and every five seconds... They were stopping the recording, deleting their presentation, opening... Oh, come on. Stop giving me these reminders. They were, they were starting their presentation recording, and then they would make a mistake, and then they'd stop the recording, and then they'd delete it, and then they'd start all over again. And if you do that, and you have 10 or 15 times that you screw up over the course of an entire project, you're wasting so much time stopping your recording, deleting it, setting the recording back up and starting from scratch. There's no reason that you can't hit record one time. And this is something that, that took me a while to realize as well because I'd sit in the studio over here in the sound booth and I'd restart my recording every time I made a mistake. But if I'm talking and then suddenly blah, 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 I blur my words together, there's no reason for me to stop my recording. I can just reset myself, come back in, and keep going. It's going to save you time because when you're done recording, you only stop recording. And I, and I know it sounds really small, but if you use ScreenFlow a lot, you're going to understand what I mean. There's no reason to restart all the time. And you can always come in and be like, okay, you know, this is where I screwed up, so I'll cut it right there. I can delete the rest of it. It saves you time, but it also gives you all of that extra content at the beginning. And for example, I do a lot of voiceovers. And the nice thing about a voiceover, especially when you're in a sound studio like we have here, if you screw up one line one time, not everything before it is unusable and not everything after it is unusable. It's just that one word because you can easily re-record that one sentence. So at the beginning, I would get all the way to the end and without even thinking, I'd screw up and I'd be like, oh, I screwed up this whole presentation, this whole recording, I'd delete the whole thing. And I had those first three minutes of the, the voiceover that were perfectly fine and there was no reason for me to get rid of them. So by not starting and stopping your presentations and your recordings all of the time, it's so much easier because you can now just you know, do it one time. You save time and you might be able to catch those little moments of greatness that you would have deleted because of a mistake that you made down the way. 
So before you even start recording, make sure you clear your desktop of all icons. You can do that from the helper icon up here, show or hide desktop icons. Make sure you have all of your things toggled on so that you never forget to record a certain part of your presentation, whether it's your voiceover or the audio of your computer, or even the, the full on desktop capture, which all of us have done a couple times. And make sure that you're not constantly starting and stopping recordings. You know, if it works for you best that way, go ahead. But for me, I found that letting it just run through, catching all my mistakes, and then going back at the end and finding the parts that were best and pulling those together is much less hassle than starting and stopping and recording all the time. So that's, that's kind of like my before you record or while recording, keep these things in mind, develop these as, as habits, and it will be a lot easier to create content quicker when you're using ScreenFlow. I'm going to jump over here and make sure we don't have any comments, which I got to say, hey, look at that. Wow. Matt Hickman Reed. Hey, man, I have ScreenFlow 502 and could never get it to work without falling over or you're giving me error messages still have just can't use it okay that i would never recommend using screenflow 502 um right now i am using um did i get rid of my most recent thing where is it right here so if we come up to about ScreenFlow, yeah, I'm on 711. Sc ScreenFlow 502 was a very long time ago. I highly recommend downloading the new version of ScreenFlow. I also, with previous versions of ScreenFlow, and I'm going to be very transparent here, previous version of ScreenFlow gave me a lot of trouble. Uh, Matt, for, for you who may not have ever been here before, I use ScreenFlow not only to show people how to use it, but I create a lot of content here at Telestream using ScreenFlow. And there was a time when I was in ScreenFlow 5 where I would come up to a deadline and then that's when ScreenFlow would start having problems. And there was like three deadlines in a row I remember where I had issues with ScreenFlow. And ever since I started using ScreenFlow 7, I haven't even had it crash on me one time. And I've been using it rigorously for months now. Um, and that's, that's from a complete like... I know I work for Telestream and I know I work for ScreenFlow. But from a user perspective, I have never been so happy with a piece of software. And I, I don't know how to express to you that I'm not just saying that, but really I am. I use it all the time. So please, Matt, download the trial of ScreenFlow and, and see if you can do in ScreenFlow 7 what you haven't been able to do in ScreenFlow 5. And we do have upgrade pricing, so you won't have to buy the whole new thing. Um, if you have any more questions, you can ask me now or you can talk to our sales team. But there is an extreme improvement from... ScreenFlow 5 to ScreenFlow 7. So I, I can't emphasize enough that you should definitely try out the newer versions. It'll change it'll change your opinions on ScreenFlow, I guarantee it. Um, it most definitely did for me, at least. Uh, let me pull up. There was another question there. Stephen Hughes, are you using Wirecast for this presentation? Sorry, I know this isn't relevant. It's always relevant because I love Wirecast too. And yes, we are using Wirecast for this presentation. Um, we're just going straight from Wirecast to, to Facebook at the moment, I believe. And uh, I just got a yes confirmation from the sound booth over there. So, yeah, we're going straight to Wirecast or straight to Facebook from Wirecast. It's really kind of like Telestream Inception here. We've got ScreenFlow into Wirecast out to Facebook. It's uh, all of our products really showing off what they can do. All right. So once you are in, once you have some content, let's pull in some content. Uh, let's go with everybody's favorite face down walk clip and then after that let's pull in face shot walk clip this is my i got when when, when we were getting ready to launch ScreenFlow 7 i pulled in uh, i bought these two pieces of uh, b stock just because i really needed something to work with and now they're like my favorite videos i use them all the time for for every kind of video it's just really good a guy cooking teaching how to cook and a walk anyways once you have this content one of the things that that I highly recommend doing is, okay, we're moving on to a next set of habits. The next habit, get good at using keyboard shortcuts. And I know we had an entire show just about this, but this is something that I, I can't stress enough that if you want to get really good at editing and you want to be really quick at the things that you do, learning keyboard shortcuts and developing them into a habit and not something you have to think about is just going to change the way that you edit. For example, 
the T key on the, sh on the, I mean, this is by far the number one keyboard shortcut that I use the most. You should never ever split your clips in any other way than pressing T. It's so easy to do. And to tell you the truth, I don't even know how you would do it without using that keyboard shortcut. I think you have to go like this and then right clip, right click and then split click, split clip. But that's such a waste of, of everything. If you can just come in here, move the scrubber you want and press T. It's incredible. When you're interacting with elements in the canvas up here, you know, you can always click on the side and move it. But if you want to crop, just press control. And now that turns into crop. And if you want to crop without holding the aspect ratio, press control and shift. And if you want to resize it without changing the aspect ratio, just press shift. And now I can resize and the aspect ratio will change the whole time. Those are just a couple of things that I use on a regular basis. If you want to learn more about keyboard shortcuts, you can come up to screen flow and then preferences. And there's an entire tab in here called shortcuts where you can customize your own keyboard shortcuts. You can read which ones are already ready to go there. And it just, I mean, this list goes on forever and ever and ever. And not everything is mapped, meaning if I wanted to hide inspector, I'd have to change it and add my own keyboard shortcut to that one specifically. But a lot of them are. Go to the start of the timeline, command left. So like if I'm here and I'm in a and I'm super zoomed in, it's gonna take me a long time to scroll. I can just do command left and boom, I'm at the beginning of the timeline. If I want to add a video action, command K. Now I have a video action set up in my layers here. If I, you know, I'm trying to scroll to bring all of my content in, shift Z, that brings all of your content into the timeline. There's so many of these keyboard shortcuts. You don't have to learn all of them, but getting a good grasp on the ones that you do often is going to change the way that you edit. Next time you're editing, just think in the back of your head, what am I doing often here that I could make quicker by learning a keyboard shortcut for? If you're someone who adds transitions to the beginning and the end of your clips all of the time well check this out if i right click and it says add starting and ending transitions oh man i always forget what this key is it's command this button and then that is is it the option key sorry guys <laughs> command option there yes so if you ever see this little symbol it's kind of like the do, do, do with a little line on it. That's option, even though you don't see that on your keyboard. So command, option, and slash is add beginning and ending transitions to that thing. And that's something that I need to work more into my, my workflows when I'm editing because I always do that. I put, you know, one of the things that I do often with that is I want to add a text, bo text box. So I can come over here, add a text box. Of course, there's a keyboard shortcut for that as well. But when I'm in the text box, I want it to say Lucas exclamation point, which is my name. And we'll put it down here. And I want it to fade in and out. So when I'm there, command shift backslash. Now it fades in. And when it's done, it'll fade out. So these kind of hot, hot keyboard, hot keys, keyboard shortcuts, whatever you want to show, call them, they will completely change the way that you, you edit in the timeline. Oh, wow. Okay. Matt Hickman Reed. Oh, no. Is this another ScreenFlow update? Nope, no ScreenFlow update at the moment. This is just our weekly or bi-weekly show. Sorry, I was reading the comments. I forgot I went a little bit off air there. Um, this is just our bi-weekly show, and uh, we just talk about ScreenFlow. And you know, today we're talking about good habits to foster when using ScreenFlow. That was for you, Phil Armstrong. Matt Hickman Reed, what I was saying is that you are on a version of ScreenFlow that is very old, um, and then in the past... In the past, I had some issues with ScreenFlow 5 as well. I highly recommend downloading ScreenFlow 7 um, and testing it out. It's, it's a life changer. For me, I had issues with 5, even some issues with 6. I've been using ScreenFlow 7 almost daily 
for months now and I haven't had it crash. I haven't had issues with any content that I've pulled into it. Of course, that's for me personally. You might be able to break it somehow, but I highly recommend checking it out over ScreenFlow 5, which is quite old technology at this point. All right, so I'm going to delete all of this stuff here. Another habit that, I mean, I'm not sure if this is a habit. I don't know what you qualify as a habit, but would you stop? <laughs> Outlook is really making me angry. I'm going to turn it off. Sorry, everyone. Um, what, one thing that, that I have found to be really helpful is and I'm not sure how, how much this applies to a lot of people, but when I when I started practicing this, it, it made my life a lot easier. So sometimes you'll sit down and you'll record something. If we go back to what I was talking about earlier, you don't want to stop your recordings over and over again just to get that one beautiful clip. You want to just record everything. Don't waste time starting and stopping so you can have everything. When you then pull that media into ScreenFlow, you're going to have this really long clip, this long piece of media. And in the past, what I used to do was I would come in and I, you know, let's, let's make believe here that this is a, a, a 10 minute clip or so. I would look at the first couple minutes and I'd be like, okay, that's where this part stops. All right, good. I've got that. And now here, that's where the second part stops. Okay, we'll, we'll save that over here. Maybe let's throw it over here so it gets out of the way. And then we'll get this part here and we'll clip that. And, you know, I don't need this second part because I screwed that one up. And then this last part we can cut into two sections. And I'll rename these and I'll put them over here. And, and when I get to that part, I can pull in that piece of content. And I realized that that wasn't doing me any favors because suddenly I was just cluttering up my timeline with all of these cut up pieces of media that didn't really help me. They were there off in the corner. And at the end of the day, all I had to do was delete all of the parts that I wasn't working with. And then when I was ready again, I can pull that exact same piece of media in and find the part that I wanted again. Now I can delete those two pieces and bring this in where I need it. And then I can grab that same piece of media again, which is everything, because this is non-destructive. Non-linear editing is, means that if I delete something, it doesn't disappear forever. Like even on these pieces of content that I shortened, I can come here and stretch them back out and get all of that media back. So there's no reason, and I don't know if you guys were doing this already, but it was something that I was doing that, that I just one day realized like, what? Why am I working like this? This is not helpful for anybody. Pull out the piece of the clip that you need and use it. And when you're ready to move on, bring that original content in, find the piece that you want, delete everything else, and then start working with that. Because you can constantly refresh your media and bring it in again to find that exact piece that you want. That way you don't have to like start nesting your clips to keep things organized on one side and pulling it over here to make sure, okay, this is the stuff I'm working on. Use your library over here as a way to store all this content that you're not using. And maybe you're just like Lucas, of course, I already do that. But for me, it was something that, that isn't, it wasn't intuitive when I first started doing it. Um, Another habit that I want to talk about when at editing, and I've, and I've covered this in the past, but it's something that I've worked into my editing and my workflows that has helped me a lot. If there's a piece of content, if there's something that you like to use over and over again, create a brand new project. Create it in that project and then save that project as, as part of your um, templates. Like if you, have, if you have a place on your desktop where you store all of your content, all of your free screen flow stuff, have a folder there with template projects. For example, if I wanted to make a lower third, I'd come over here and I'd grab, you know, let's just say that I made this from scratch just now. But then I come in and over here, I want to add a text box. Um, and in that text box, I want it to say Lucas, because that's my name. And let's change the, let's change it to purple and move it in here. And now here is my lower third. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this as my lower third for screen flow. Save it as a screen flow document. And now 
when I'm in my other project here, which actually I think I want to pull back in my FaceTime camera and have this as part of it because now I'm going to say this is Lucas over here. Now I don't have to remake that lower third. I can just come over. <laughs> Funny, now I have to show my desktop icons. Find my lower third template. Highlight it. Copy it. Close it. Paste it in here. And now I have my lower third ready to go. I can come over here, maybe even uh, group these together so that I only have to click one of them to move it down into the bottom left and then pull my camera in on top. So start working with these templates. Every time you create a new asset that you think you're going to be using in multiple projects, whether it be an intro video or an outro video or something like a lower third here, or maybe even a quick little animation that you like to use to introduce people to, in, I mean, use your imagination, anything that you would want to create and maybe use multiple times, create a template ScreenFlow file for that. You don't even have to export it. Just keep it in there so you can open it up, copy and paste it into a new document when you're ready to go, and it just saves a ton of time, which is really helpful. Now, habits. So those, those were kind of my editing habits. Uh, there might be some other ones that I do without even thinking, without even realizing that they're a habit, but in general, you want to get used to using your hotkeys because it's going to save you a ton of time. You want to be mindful of not bringing content in, splitting it up and storing it in your timeline because you have this wonderful, uh, this wonderful, what's it called above me? The library, content library where you can just keep replenishing and refreshing that content So because it's non-destructive. It's not going to delete it forever. And you want to make sure that you have your templates for different pieces of media that you're creating when you're making ScreenFlow shows, when you're making ScreenFlow um, projects, excuse me. I'm going to double check some of our questions here. Boop, 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 dude. Yep. I like that ScreenFlow is always answering the questions that I am answering as well, just in case you guys can't hear them. Thank you, ScreenFlow Facebook. Um, and yeah, so moving into the last part, the, the exporting part. I don't I got to say I don't have a ton of habits here because ScreenFlow builds in the habits for you. Um, when you come here to export, you can customize your export settings to exactly how you want them to be. And therefore, you don't have to develop any habits because you set it and you forget it, just like that old rotisserie chicken commercial on TV. Set it and forget it. So I have my own customized web high thing. I like 1,200 K bits per second, 30 frames per second, single pass. Um, if you want to really up the quality, you can do multi-pass. It gets a little bit bigger. You say, okay and then export. So my habit to develop on export is make sure that you set exactly what you want that one time, make it custom, and then use that every single time. I don't think that you're going to run into any problems and exporting is such a is such a computative, I don't know if that's a word. It's it's a computing resource. It's like it's not something that you do. You press a button and it happens. The recording of content in ScreenFlow, that's all based on you. The editing of that content, it's all you. It's not automated. It's not done by some algorithm in the background. With the actual exporting of video content, that's not you. That's ScreenFlow. So you can set ScreenFlow to do what you want, and you don't have to worry about developing habits on that side of things. Um, and I think that's just about all I had today in terms of developing habits for ScreenFlow. You've got your your pre-recording habits, your recording habits, and your editing habits. And, and you know, these are things that work for me. Maybe they won't work for you. Maybe you have habits that, that I should be employing that I haven't even thought about. The cool thing about using ScreenFlow consistently is you start to realize where you are having issues with it. And then you can develop your own habits to be like, oh, I can... I can you know, get past this issue if I start doing something a little bit different. And I love those like self self learning moments when you're like, Oh my God, I've been doing this so wrong and I didn't even realize and boom, now I got a system that works so much better for what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm going to check the comments here one last time. Can you create folders in the content library to organize content better? Randy, I don't believe you can, but I got to tell you, I would love that feature as well. Um, especially with the global library, because it's something that I, that I, I mean, you can see I have, 
I start I start like deleting things out when I'm not using them anymore because it gets a little complicated and convoluted. A little bit easier is not so much the thumbnail version, but the uh, the list version. Um, gosh. Add the timeline of the scrubber, delete media. Yeah, you can't you can't make folders a folder system inside of this. Now, what would happen if we tried to bring in an entire folder? I don't believe you can do that. No, you can't do that. So there's no folder system within there. But I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to go out and I'm going to tell our product manager right now that that's one of my features that I want implemented into ScreenFlow because I... I don't think I ever really thought of it that clearly, but that's definitely something that I've been like frustrated with is the uh, inability to really, really uh, dial in the, the the organization in there. So Randy, very good point. I am on board. I'm on your side with that. Stephen Hughes says, another off-topic question. Love all the advice. As a musician and someone who records a lot, letting the tape roll is super important. Agree? That's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, advice for webcam to work with ScreenFlow or Wirecast. I make lessons tutorials for students. Not happy with a Logitech HD webcam. So, Stephen, I got to tell you, I, I think the – which version of the Logitech HD webcam are you using? Because I know, I know that Logitech has um, quite a few options when it comes to uh, webcams. I'm actually just going to look at their webcams right now. Logitech webcams. Let's see if we go in here. They've got the 4K Pro, the C9222 for streaming, the Pro, the C525, the C920. This is the C920 is one that I've used quite a bit. I don't think it's the best camera in the world, but it works pretty well. Um, not only exactly what camera are you using, but what kind of quality are you going for as well? What what are you recording with it? Brio 4K and it works awesome. Is that... Get out of my face, ads. All right, let's see. The Brio 4K. Logitech Ultra HD Brio 4K webcam. So I, I guess that's this one. I don't see the word Brio on here, but yeah, I've never used this one, but uh, looks like we already have one piece of feedback from the C920. Yeah. So Stephen, I think I think if you're going to if you're going to stick with the USB webcam, I haven't really heard of better webcams than Logitech. Um, I spent a lot of time in the in the video game streaming market as well, and everyone loves the Logitech webcams. They have like a monopoly over there because people love them. I really think that stepping up to something like this one that uh, that I think it was Randy that pointed out. Yeah. Clarity lighting. So. You can you can work on boosting your lighting, and that will help a lot as well. Try not to get backlit too much, and try and get better lighting. But I would upgrade to a higher quality webcam like this one. Randy says the the Brio 4K is pretty good. I haven't used it myself, but you know we we do a lot of streaming here. We do a lot of video creation. I don't use webcams ever. I think they're great, but we have access to better cameras, so we use those. When you have non-webcams, though, you start bringing in other hardware like capture cards in order to get that HD video signal into your computer. That can get a little tricky depending on the capture card you're using. ScreenFlow doesn't support all capture cards. Um, so it's definitely a lot easier with webcams. So if you want to stick with the webcam, make it a little bit easier. Maybe look into this uh, Brio 4K or focus more on getting better lighting because that will help a lot with your with your uh, video capture. Or you can you know maybe start looking at higher quality cameras, um, recording separately from ScreenFlow onto maybe uh, I know people use digital SLRs um, to record. You could just record under the chip and then bring it into ScreenFlow later. Um, and there's 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 a lot of different options, but 
I do know that the C920 is solid, but it's definitely not the best one out there. So I would spend a little time looking, but um, whatever you do, don't use your FaceTime camera and your Mac. That's just the worst option. So, All right, with that, everyone, thank you for your questions. I hope it was helpful. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have uh, a ScreenFlow Live about... Um, Flotility, which is an asset that, that we sell as well as ScreenFlow. It comes with a whole bunch of little uh, animations, um, uh, transitions, things like that that are that are pre-built that you can bring into your um, you can bring into your presentations. So stick around. Two weeks from now we'll be talking all about that kind of stuff. Uh, last comments here just to double check. Um, good feedback. Thanks so much. You're welcome, Stephen. Randy says, I'm using the Brio on top of the MacBook Pro with SSD drives, which sounds like you're 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 doing it like you're doing top of the line webcam recording, the best you can get there. And Matt says, Awesome sauce. I feel the same way. Thank you everyone for coming. Just a reminder, you can follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash screenflow, uh, on Twitter at screenflow and on YouTube. ScreenFlow Tube is our channel there. And uh, yeah, hopefully I see you guys all in a little bit of time. Uh, oh, don't forget to sign up there if you want. Telestream.net slash ScreenFlow Live. You can get um, updates to when we go live. So thanks everyone for coming. It was awesome hanging with you on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. And I will see you all in a couple weeks. Bye-bye. <laughs>